Hello, guys. Are you ready for another session on Victorian literature? That's what we are talking about today. I hope you have been watching all the videos of the NET study plan. And I hope you're finding them useful. If you like them, do let us know because it's a great encouragement to us to do more and more. With me here today is Ankita Ganguly from Kolkata. Hi. Ankita has been with me every day, as you know. And today we have made a PowerPoint presentation. Ankita doesn't know all the questions because she is learning with you. Ankita has cleared net and now preparing for JRF. All of you guys read extra on all this. All these authors, works, movements that we discuss, and you will also clear net with JRF. Okay, the first question. Identify the correct statement. Queen Victoria was the last Hanoverian monarch. Is it true? She ruled from 1837 to 1901. Queen Victoria's reign is it 1837 to 1901. This 1830s, when at the time she ruled, witnessed a crescendo of agreement that Britain stood on the brink of a radical break with established institutions, habits, and way of life. It was a very tumultuous period. Yes or no? Are these correct or wrong? Which of these is not true? Do you know, guys? You two babies are joining one by one. Ankita. I think all these are correct. What do you think? Yeah, all these statements seem to be true. I think all are true. Yes. I have changed the picture today. <laughs> Every answer slide has a new picture. Would you like that? No, this is a colorful Queen Victoria, but looking <laughs> very grim. So Queen Victoria was the last Hanoverian monarch. The Hanoverians are... George's one, two, three, four, William the fourth, and Queen Victoria. She ruled from 1837 to 1901, correct. 1830s witnessed a crescendo of agreement that Britain stood on the brink of a radical break with established institutions. It was a time of great tumult and change. Everything was changing at that time. Okay, all are true. Guys, which even did not take place during Queen Victoria's reign. Queen Victoria ruled from 1837 to 1901. So many things changed at that time. Which of these did not take place? The Great Reform Acts. Ankita, there were three Great Reform Acts, right? Yes, three, I think, yeah, three. 1832, 1867, and 1884, if I'm right. Yes, huh, huh. So that is Queen Victoria's reign. However, 1832 is not Queen Victoria. Let us see the next option. Peterloo Massacre. Mm, Shelley wrote about it, Ankita. So yes. it must be earlier. The Chartist Movement. Oh, that is 1838 to 48, I remember. Chartist Movement. Carlyle wrote Chartism also. The Great Exhibition of London is 1851. Oh, dear friends, what do you think is the answer? Which of these did not take place during Queen Victoria's reign? I am sure it is Peterloo Massacre because even though Great Reform Acts, one of them was before Queen Victoria, it is Peterloo. I think, do you remember the year, Ankita, Peterloo Massacre? I think it was 1819. Yes, 1819. I found a televised uh, show from where I took this picture. Wow, Peterloo Massacre. It was actually a massacre at St. Peter's Fields and it was called Peterloo after uh, Waterloo. Waterloo. Now, uh, Shelley wrote a few poems based on Peterloo Massacre. Do you know? remember any of them, guys? One is England in 1819, then the Mask of Anarchy, even Ode to the West Wind, has some response to Peterloo Massacre. Will you remember all that, guys? It was a time of great many revolts. The 18th century uh, and 19th century 
witnessed a lot of revolts. People revolted against the governments a lot. Next question. Which novel among the following uh, has a man laying down his life to keep a promise to his friends? Somebody is laying down his life. See, he's going to be killed. Oh, is it Pickwick Papers, Oliver Twist, A Tale of Two Cities or David Copperfield? You two babies, it's your take. You can tell me the correct answer. Come on, guys, everybody, write in the chat box. Let me check what's happening in YouTube. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. It is. Indeed. Ankita, do you know the answer? You two babies know. I think it's A Tale of Two Cities. Right. Charles Dickens is A Tale of Two Cities, where you have Sidney Carton laying down his life for Charles Darney and Lucy Manet. Very good. The Tale of Two Cities was influenced by Carlyle's French Revolution. Mm. And the two cities are London and Paris. Those are the two cities. Very good. Uh, the Tale of Two Cities has also characters. Madame de Farge and Monsieur de Farge. Henna, guys, very good. Look at this picture. You'll, if you look at the pictures, you won't forget. Identify the wrong pair. Sam Weller, Pickwick Papers. Sam Weller is the clerk of Samuel Pickwick, I think. Yes, he's a very famous character. It is correct. Clara Peggy, David Copperfield. Mm. Ankita. She was the nurse of David, wasn't she? Yes. Ankita is saying, mm, seriously. <laughs> uh, Clara Peggy and her brother, Mr. Peggy. They are important characters in David Copperfield. Yes. Mr. Peggy has two adopted children in David Copperfield. One is Ham. The other is little Emily. Remember, guys? Yeah. So that's correct. Nellie Dean, is she from Wuthering Heights, Ankita? Yes, I think Nellie Dean was one of the narrators in Wuthering Heights. Ah, correct. The other narrator is Lockwood. Nellie Dean and Lockwood, correct. Mrs. Parsit, is she from Bleak House? All these three are wrong. Sorry, correct. So this must be wrong. Mrs. Sparsit is in Hard Times. Look at Mrs. Sparsit. Oh, <laughs> she is the housekeeper of Bounderby. Bounderby is the husband of Louisa, uh, the daughter of Tom Gradgrind. Uh, Mrs. Parsett is a bad character in Hard Times. Remember, Ankita, to whom is Hard Times dedicated? It was dedicated to Carlyle. Ha ha, right. Uh, it was dedicated to Carlyle. And also, do you remember the Subtitle of Hard Times? Hard Times or for this times? For these times. Guys, uh, so Ankita, did you know some of them were asking me, how does Ankita the, remember all these things? Tell them. I told them uh, Ankita attended our courses. She's yeah. studying very hard. I have been uh, studying at Vallat for four years now. So, you know, I have done many courses of ma'am. I have followed all of her instructions. And I think that's the key because once you start following ma'am's instructions, you follow, you know, the techniques she says of revising things, uh, the, the tips she gives, gives the rapid fires uh, ma'am takes in her sessions. I think those have really helped me in all these years to, you know, remember these things in a very correct manner. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing. Ankita, sometimes, but I look like this when you don't answer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The school, Doth Boys Hall in Yorkshire can be found in which work? See the pandemonium in Doth Boys Hall is depicted in the picture. Is it in David Copperfield, Great Expectations, Nicholas Nickleby or Jane Eyre? Tell me, tell me, tell me. You two babies, I'm waiting for your answer. Is it David Copperfield? No. The school in David Copperfield is Salem House. Is it Great Expectations? No. The school in Great Expectations is run by, um, uh, what is his name? Uh, at Canterbury. No, that is in David Copperfield. Who is there a school in David Copperfield where he goes to? Mr. Pocket, Matthew Pockets. Yes. Nicholas Nickleby. You two babies are all saying C, 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 C. That is correct. Nicholas Nickleby has the school 
Doth Boys Hall. Jane Eyre has a school. Lowood School. Lowood School. Correct. Nicholas Nicholas. Oh, hey, yaar, did you know, Ankita? This is the school that uh, Dickens based the Doth Boys Hall on. This is the actual school uh, in Yorkshire from where he uh, modeled his Doth Boys Hall. Did you like that, guys? Very good. Dash is set in the fictional industrial town of Milton in Northern England, modeled on Manchester. Milton, this town is modeled on Manchester. And did you know, guys, um, this novel shows the difference between the northern industrial towns and the southern towns of England. Is it Cranford, Ruth, North and South or Wives and Daughters? These are all uh, by Elizabeth Gaskell. You can see the English countryside here, but in Milton, the industrial town, everything is not so red. Everything is black, 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 black. Like in the beginning of Coke Town, Charles Dickens says. Which is the novel, guys? Yes, Shrabani and others are saying North and South, that is right, by Elizabeth Gaskell. North and South. Ankita, do you know the name of the protagonist, the heroine in North and South? I think it's Margaret Hill. Margaret Hale is correct. Margaret Hale is in love with John Thornton. John Thornton is the battling lover. They are always fighting. Huh? Very good. The town is Milton. Very good, guys. Next question. According to Darwin, man is not a creation of God, but a product of natural forces. Correct, correct, correct. Man is not superior to any other species. Uh, correct, Anna, because he is, man is evolving, everybody is evolving. The purpose of existence is reproduction. Oh, is that true? On the origin of species, my means of natural selection. Is it all are true? I think so. Yes, all are true. Here is our grandpapa, Charles Darwin. Hello, Charles Darwin, grandpa. How are you, grandpa? <laughs> okay, next question. Ha ha, graceful as the new woman. I took this picture so that everybody can see. Choose the wrong pair. New woman. Was it coined by Sarah Grand, Angita? Yeah, I think it was uh, coined by Sarah Grand. Yes, yes, yes. And look at this new woman. Oh, they are selling. This is a uh, this is an advertisement for this uh, overcoat, for this uh, top, top. Bicycle waist, it is called. To enable you to ride bicycle, it is not long. The most sensible garment ever invented. Oh, really? As shown in cut, it comes only to the waist. Okay, only till here. That was a great invention in those days. <laughs> to wear a crop top, it was a great invention. <laughs> Women were so oppressed in the West, guys. They were uh, not allowed to wear comfortable clothing. Now, Jeremy Bentham, is he associated with utilitarianism, Ankita? Uh, yes, I think he was the one in whom... Yes, yes, yes. Shrabani Patnaik is a smart, smart girl. She has been following us in YouTube for a long time. She says all the correct answers along with a lot of others. There are so many people here saying correct answers. Shrabani said it. Condition of England question is not by John Henry Newman. It is by Thomas Carlyle. What do you mean by condition of England? It means the condition of the working classes in England. And silver fork fiction is a term used by Carlyle for upper class fiction. Which writer wrote Silver Fox Fiction, Ankita? I think it was Benjamin Disraeli. Right. Benjamin Disraeli, according to Hazlitt, wrote Silver Fork Fiction. That means very upper class fiction. Opposite is Condition of England Fiction, where you talk about the condition of the working classes. Look at their condition here. Got it? Are you loving the session, guys? Let us know if you are loving it. You can type hot, 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 hot in the chat box. And you can also like, 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 like. Which among the following is absent from Bronte's Wuthering Heights? Oh, is there a frame narrative in Wuthering Heights? Dreams and elements of supernaturalism, broodings on death, mortality and class conflicts, protests for voting rights. Bola, bola, Ankita. Your turn. I think voting rights was not there in Wuthering Heights. Yes, voting yeah. rights. Women's suffragette movement came later. Yeah. Women started to clamor for votes only later. It was not there in uh, Victorian England. That is correct. Thank you very much, guys. 
for the correct answers. Which is the pastoral elegy which attacks the sick, hurry, and divided aims of contemporary life. Look at everybody hurrying. The sick, hurry, and divided aims of contemporary life. Is it Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold? Is it Empedocles on Etna, the scholar Gypsy, or Thyrsus? Sick, hurry, and divided aims. You two babies, your turn. Thank you, guys. I saw their messages. Yes, yes, yes. It is. You two babies are thinking. Ankita, you can answer. I think it's a scholar gypsy. Amazing. It is a scholar gypsy where he takes, a, Arnold takes a story from Joseph Glanville's Vanity of Human, Dogmatizing, Vanity of Dogmatizing. And he talks about a scholar gypsy. You can see him here wearing a hat and sitting. He is fed up of the sick hurry and divided aims. And he's leaving Oxford and going to the countryside, living among the gypsies. He's living among the gypsies. And you know, guys, um, scholar gypsy is similar to Dover Beach. Because in Dover Beach also, there is a disconcernment. There is a discontent with the age, right? Very good. Joseph Glanville's Vanity of Dogmatizing. That is where this 17th century story is told. And uh, Scholar Gypsy is also having elements of pastoral elegy. The typical pastoral elegy of uh, Arnold is Thyrsus, which for whom, for whose death uh, did he write Thyrsus, Ankita? Arthur Hatch Clough. Arthur Hugh Clough. Ah, Arthur Hugh Clough. That is right. Arthur Hugh Clough. News from Nowhere is a classic work combining utopian socialism and soft science fiction. Array, even science fiction. Written by an artist, a designer, and socialist pioneer. Is it J.S. Mill? William Morris. Oh, William Morris it could be because he was pre-Raphaelite and pre-Raphaelites were artists. Samuel Butler. Oh, Samuel Butler also wrote books like this in the Victorian period. Is it A.C. Swinburne? News from nowhere. Do you remember, Ankita? Utopian socialism. Oh, I can see the subtitle here. News from nowhere or an epoch of rest being chapters from something like that. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was William Morris. Yes. William Morris. This is the guy. He was a designer and he is standing against one design that he made. This is a design that he made. I always tell my students, you two babies, remember, in case you want, you don't want to teach English literature, you can start a lungi shop where you can print William Morris's designs as lungis. <laughs> William Morris made amazing lungi designs. Actually, these are wallpapers, but for lungi also great. Huh? <laughs> William Morris uh, was the pioneering founder of the English arts and crafts movement. Arts and crafts movement. Okay, if any of the YouTube babies think this is an amazing lungi design, you can tell us in the chat box. Yes, amazing lungi design. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> They're all laughing. The woman in white. Oh, they go like a ghost. A woman is standing. The first sensation novel by Wilkie Collins was serialized in Dash. You know, uh, sensation novels had, um, you know, mystery, murder. Yes, yes. Uh, better for sari, uh, Neeraja is saying. Okay, we can make saris also. The Woman in White, the first sensation novel, where was it serialized? Is it Thackeray's Cornhill magazine? Is it Dickens's All the Year Round or Household Words? Or is it George Eliot's Westminster Review? Ankita, don't look so glum. You can try answering. <laughs> I think it was All the Year Round. Yeah. Correct. They go, they go all the year round and all of Dickens' serialized publications came with a light green color, bottle green color, light green color. Whereas Thackeray's books were all published in canary yellow. Did you know that, guys? Thackeray's books in canary yellow and Dickens' books in uh, green color. All right. Very good. Ankita, shall we move on? Huh. Identify the wrong statement. Again, Charles Dickens is coming. Barnaby Rudge is a historical novel by Dickens. Barnaby Rudge is a historical novel, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barnaby Rudge. It is set against garden riots or something, isn't it? Yeah. 
Quilp is an ugly, cruel dwarf in the old curiosity shop. That is right. Quilp is an ugly, queer, uh, un ugly, cruel dwarf. And he is trying to uh, attack little Nell and her grandfather. That's correct. Then Uriah Heep is a snake-like, vengeful man in David Copperfields. Uh, that's correct, isn't it, Ankita? Uriah Heep is... Uriah Heep is in David Copperfield. Yes, he's a snake-like man wearing black dress. He wants yeah. to teach David a lesson. He wants to prevent David from marrying Agnes. Oh, he's a very bad man. He lives as a paying guest at um, Mr. Wickfield's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Peter Ackroyd's The Great Fire of London is based on Dickens's Our Mutual Friends. Is that correct, Ankita? No, I think it was based on Dickens's Little Dorrit. That is amazing. It is correct. The Great Fire of London is a novel by Peter Ackroyd. It is based on the filming of Little Dorrit. Dickens's Little Dorrit is being filmed. And that is the setting of The Great Fire of London. Did you know, Ankita? Peter Ackroyd is a biographer. Yes, yes. And he wrote a biography of? Oscar Wilde. Uh -huh. Oscar Wilde and London also. London, so many yeah. biographies he has written. Yes, yes, yes. Which work among the following was inspired partly by Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven and portrays the unfulfilled yearning of a young unmarried woman for her lover? Sonnets from the Portuguese by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, yearning for Robert Browning, eh? Or is it The Blessed Damosel, Fra Lippo Lippi or The Dreamer? Ah, YouTube babies, tell us the answer. Yes, the YouTubers are all correct, uh, correctly answering. More people, please answer. Yes, it is The Blessed Damosel. This is the painting of The Blessed Damosel that... Um, DJ Rossetti made. Ankita, how many lilies is the damsel carrying in her hands? Uh, three lilies in her hand. Yes. And how many stars in her hair? Uh, seven stars. Yeah, but the picture shows only six. One is inside her hair, I think. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a lover below on the earth. This damsel is in heaven. Is, is at the gates of heaven. Yeah. Great going, guys. Oh, who is this? Who among the following is associated with a seemingly unreliable project, unreliable project of writing a book called Key to All Mythologies? He's a very suspicious man. He is going to cause trouble to his wife. Is it Felix Holt, Edward Casabon, Tito Melima, or Adam Bede? These are all characters by George Eliot. You two babies, shoot away. What is the answer? Oh, they're all answering all the questions correctly. I'm so proud of you guys. Yes. Tell me the answer, guys. It is indeed. It is indeed. Ankita? Edward Casabon from Middle Edward March. Casabon. And this is, who is she? Dorothea. Dorothea Brooke. This is in Middle March. Edward Casabon is Dorothea's husband. And uh, you know what, guys? Edward Casabon did not want Dorothea to marry um, Will Ladislaw. He made a will saying, if Dorothea marries Ladislaw, she should be disinherited. And Dorothea married Ladislaw. She did not care for the inheritance. Do you know, Ankita, who is the uh, foil character or the dual protagonist in Middlemarch? You two babies, you can also answer the Tertius protagonist in Middlemarch. Once again, Ankita. A tertius Lidget. That's right. The doctor... Tertius Lidgate. Very good. I'm so proud of you all. Correct her. Now, which novel among the following has the epigraph? In their deaths, they were not divided. It looks like a brother and sister. Is it Wuthering Heights? Oh, it could be Heathcliff and Catherine. Is it Mill on the Floss? Oh, it could be Tom and Maggie. Is it Tess of the Rubbles? Is this Tess and is this Alec Durbable? No way. Is it a Christmas carol? Oh, everybody knows the answer. It is The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. Ankita, what is the floss in this novel? It's the river. Aha, the river is the floss. There is a mill. And who, uh, who is owning the mill at the beginning? 
I don't remember. Maggie's father, Mr. Tulliver. Ha, ha, ha. Maggie's, ha. Mr. Tulliver. father, yes. Mr. Tulliver. Very good, very good. Yeah, don't forget, these are classics. Yeah. All right. Which novel? Oh, what a beautiful countryside. Which novel among the following is set in Egdon Heath? This is Egdon Heath. And it begins on Guy Fawkes Night. Ankita, it not only begins, it ends one year later on the next Guy Fawkes Night also. Okay. Your yeah, friends in YouTube, tell me. Yes, Ankita, you were saying something. I think uh, it's The Return of the Native. You remember correctly. Far from the madding crowd, no. A pair of blue eyes, no. The trumpet major, no. The Return of the Native is correct. These are the novels by Thomas Hardy. Remember, Ankita, who is the protagonist, the woman in Return of the Native. She is always in love with the horizon. She wants to go to Paris. She is Eustacia Y. Eustacia Y. Very good. Whom does she marry? She marries uh, Claim Your Bright. Ha, Claim Your Bright. Claim, Claim Your, your bright. bright. Very good. Very good. That is the Return of the Native. Correct. You two babies, you're right. Which novel among the following begins with the Schoolmaster of Mary Green leaving the village. The schoolmaster of the village, Mary Green, he is teaching a young boy. He is leaving the village to go to Christminster. Is it Adam Bede, Romola, Daniel Deronda, or oh, Jude the Obscure? YouTubers, your turn. Yes, Nagraja, you're right. Which novel among the following begins with the schoolmaster of Mary Green leaving the village? Ankita, you can answer. Is it uh, Adam? Jude the Obscure. Ha, ah, correct. In Jude the Obscure, who is the schoolmaster leaving the village? Richard Philotson. Richard Philotson. Later he marries Jude's cousin, Sue Bridehead. Sue Bridehead is a new woman. And, and uh, both Jude and Sue get separated from their partners, from their uh, spouses. And they live together without getting married. They have children. Their children commit suicide. Remember? Very sad story. Jude the Obscure. The last novel by Hardy. It was so controversial that he stopped writing novels and turned to Dash, Ankita. He turned to poetry. Yes. He started writing poetry once again. Correct. He was the Slade Professor of Fine Art at Oxford. You can see Oxford here. He advocated the idea of art for life's sake. And introduce the principle of naturalism in the judging of art. Who is he? Is it Henry Mayhew? Thomas Macaulay? John Ruskin or Walter Pater? <clears throat> YouTubers, amazing. Tell us more. Yes, guys. It is John Ruskin. John Ruskin was an artist. Which group of poets did he support and patronize, Ankita? The Pre-Raphaelites. Yes, John Ruskin uh, advocated art for life's sake, supported the Pre-Raphaelites. John Ruskin and Arnold both advocated art for life's sake. Walter Pater was also at Oxford at that time. He supported the aesthetic movement. Ankita, do you know who wrote, what did Henry Mayhew write? Guys, listen to this. What did Henry Mayhew write? I, I don't know. London labor and the London poor. Uh -huh. Very good. London labor and the London poor. Very good. Uh, we will now remember, isn't it? Very good. Right. Dear friends, are you loving the session? Is it useful? Is it helping you? Let us know. It is a lot of hard work, guys, making these questions, doing it at night. We are doing it just because we think it will help you and we, you will love it. We need to know how it is helping you. Yes. The Latin title of which work means Taylor Repatched? Is it Apologia Pro, Pro Vita Sua, Sarta Visartas, Munera Pulveris, or Force Clavigera? The author is sitting like this. When will you answer, guys? Please answer fast. I need to go to bed, guys. He is saying, not me. The author is saying. <laughs> YouTubers, you're right. It is. Sa, 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 sa. Ankita. A sorter resorters. Thomas Carlyle's sorter resorters. The life and opinions of her Tufel's Rock in three books. Her Tufel's Rock is the man, the protagonist, and he's 
He's an imaginary German professor who is writing an imaginary book called Clothes, Their Origin and Influence. Will you remember all this? Clothes, Their Origin and Influence. All these are important works of the Victorian prose. Right, guys. Uh, next question. Culture and Anarchy by Arnold consists of a series of periodical essays which were published in Dash. Is it all the year round? Belgravia. Belgravia, I know. Vanity Fair was published in Belgravia. No, Return of the Native. Which of these? YouTubers the Return of the Native. Yes. Now tell me, Culture and Anarchy was published where? Is it Conhill Magazine? The graphic? Ankita, wild guess. The, the Cornhill magazine? Ah. I have even put the magazine here. The <laughs> Cornhill magazine, new series, number 3, 350, August 1925. <gasps> wow. Tarang, which of these collections carried a poem about a faultless painter and his unfaithful life, Lucretia? <gasps> you know, guys, it is Andrea Del Sato, this one. But in which collection did it appear? Dramatis Personae, Men and Women, Dramatic Lyrics, Dramatic Romances and Lyrics. Any idea, Ankita? Um, dramatis Personae, I'm just guessing wildly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can guess a little lower. It is Men and Women. Men and women. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea Del Sato, uh, Made this portrait, guys. This is Andrea. Both are Andrea. <laughs> Double self-portrait. <laughs> Both are Andrea. Did you know that? Great. Identify the wrong author biographer pair. Again, somebody is waiting for you. Please answer. It, is Dickens's biography written by John Foster? Ha ha. Charlotte Bronte's biography written by Elizabeth Gaskell? I think yes. Oscar Wilde's Peter Ackroyd or William McPeace Thackeray's John Lockhart. Which of these is wrong? I know. You Do you know, Ankita? I think the last option is wrong. John oh, Lockhart. John Lockhart wrote the biography of this man. Who is he? Walter Scott. ta -da! Correct. Hey, Walter Scott. Great going. The Charge of the Light Brigade. Ode on the death of Duke of Wellington. This is Duke of Wellington. These poems can be found in which collection? Ayo. Ayo. Which collection? So many publication questions this time. What is this? Poems chiefly lyrical? Maud and other poems? Idols of the king? None of these. YouTubers, you have to say. YouTubers. It is one, two, three, four. It is what, Ankita? It is, we'll say together, it is um, mod, mod and, and other poems. Other poems. <laughs> Correct. This is the man who wrote mod and other poems. This is Lord Alfred Tennyson. Great. Now, who described Tennyson as a suburban Virgil? Suburban Virgil. G.K. Chesterton, Matthew Arnold, T.S. Eliot, Queen Victoria. Are you tired, Ankita? You too, no, baby. No. You might be tired. You're not? Great. But this is the last question. Can you tell me the answer, guys? Anybody? Ankita? I think it's uh, G.K. Chesterton. <gasps> G.K. Chesterton is asking, how do you know, Ankita? He is shocked that Ankita said his name. <laughs> YouTubers, are you loving our session together? YouTubers, if you like our session, you should share with your friends. You should tell them, dear, dear friends, join the session. This is a lot of amazing learning. For net, set and all other exams that you're preparing for, this is 100% going to be useful. Will you share? Will you like? Will you let us know what you think? Amazing. Thank you, dear friends. So that's all from me and Ankita tonight. We will be back with more. Monday to Friday. Be with us. Okay. Bye, bye, bye. See you tomorrow.